Two of the things that Twitter is famous for doing are counting the amount of characters in your tweet and checking to see if your tweet has things like a website or an image in it. So this is a program that will simulate what Twitter does. This is the complicated version that does both the character counting and searching for a website. To start out with character counting, I created a function called tweet length. So I set up a function var tweet length is equal to function of tweet. I set up another variable, a local variable within the function called length, which is equal to tweet.length, the length of your tweet, the input. Then I have three if statements. The first one is if the length is greater than 150, there's a pop-up. The browser will confirm that your tweet is whatever the length of your tweet is, minus 140 characters too long. So if you had a 150 character tweet, it would say your tweet is 10 characters too long. Otherwise, it says else if the length is less than 140, it says that your tweet is short enough, and you can even add 140 minus the length of your current tweet, more characters. So for example, if you had a tweet that was 30 characters long, the function would take your input, it would find the length was 30 characters, it would determine that the length was less than 140. So it would say your tweet is short enough, you could even add, then it would do 140 minus 30 and get 110 more characters. Otherwise, if none, neither of these are the case, your tweet must be 140 characters, so it confirms that as well right here. That can determine how many characters you have left in your tweet. You have to set up another function to determine whether or not your tweet has a website in it. So there is actually a search function on JavaScript that will do this one way. But this is a way to do it without using the search function. The first thing to do is to set up an array, which has a list of all sorts of things you typically find at the end of a website, .com, .org, .net, .gov, etc. Now to use this, we have to have the program go through your tweet that you typed in the beginning and check to see if it has any of these I call them tags, in it. So this actually required me to create two functions. The first function tests, right here, it's called tag finder. It tests to see if your tweet has a certain tag, for example, .com. So I start with a for loop for i is equal to zero, as long as i is less than or equal to the length of your tweet, I will go up. And it checks to see first if the character it's at in the tweet is equal to the first character of your website tag. If it finds that, it starts another for loop, which is going through, and it starts by saying that if uh, the character it's at in the tweet, it's continuing to look through the tweet, if the character it's at no longer matches the character it's at in the website tag, then it will stop. So for example, if you had a tweet that said hello.con, then it would not then it would stop there. It'd say, wait a second, con does not match the last character in .com, so it would break your loop. Otherwise, if it hasn't broken the loop, then it checks again to see that you're at the end of your cycle. So if j is equal to website tag dot length, it means it's checking the last character in your website tag. If the characters still match, if it hasn't found anything that doesn't match along the way, then it will confirm your tweet has a link in it and then it changes the tweet to high and sets k to all tags that length plus one and breaks the loop to make sure that nothing will continue running. So the next part is a function called that I call website finder, which is down here. And it runs through and applies tag finder to each tag. So it so tag finder you'll notice actually has two inputs, website tag and tweet. Website finder only has one input, which is your tweet and then it runs a loop where it, it checks each position in your array called all tags. So it tests first the first tag, then the second, third, fourth, etc. by running through a for loop. And so that's where you get your second input for your function. Now to actually test and see if this works, we can open it up in a browser. So it says type your tweet here. If I type a simple tweet like hello, exclamation point, it tells me I have 134 more characters that I could add because it's calculated that I had only six characters. It subtracted that from 140 and got me 134. 
and it stops there. If I were to type in hello.com, it now again determines that I have 131 more characters to add, but it also recognizes that my tweet has a link in it because it's gone through and looked at all the tags and compared each of the tags against every bit of text in your tweet. Now the important part at the bottom is to call the functions. So I set a variable, called it arbitrarily a, set it to prompt type your tweet here, which is why when you first start the program, it prompts you to type your tweet, you say something. So then you have to call the two functions. The first function I call is tweet length of a. So it applies this whole thing to my tweet, which is a. So once I've typed into the little box that says type your tweet here, it's storing that string as a. And that's the input to my tweet length function, which now determines the length, et cetera, et cetera. And then I call website finder on a, which again takes tweet as its input and uses it all the way through to tag finder. So when you test it, no matter what you do, it will give you two pieces of information. One, how long your tweet is, and two, whether or not you have a link in it.